Every year, the NFL annual owners meeting, they take place down in Florida. Not South, South Florida, but they go a little bit north to Orlando. So they probably go to Disney World a little bit after with their friends and family and stuff. But anyway, uh, those are taking place right now. And annually, Mr. Jonathan Harbaugh, he takes some time out of his busy schedule to speak with the media. Now, um, if I take you back a year ago, it was at the annual owners meeting when John Harbaugh was speaking to the media. Right when he sat down, right before he started, was when Lamar dropped that bombshell. When Lamar was like, oh, I requested to be traded like 26 days ago, but they haven't honored my trade request. I just want to go to a team that's willing to, have all that stuff. Y'all remember that. But thank goodness we are exactly a year removed from that. Um, so we ain't got to deal with stuff like that. No, oh, that was some scary, scary times, man. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, um, John Harbaugh, he had a lot to say. He gave us a lot of updates on some stuff that's going on with the Baltimore Ravens. A big update, some that we believe in, some that we like. Uh, we're going to get into all of that. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and run them likes all the way up. Y'all been going crazy with the like button recently, and I appreciate it like crazy. Keep on going crazy with it. And special shout out to our newest team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Seven. So thank you, Seven. I appreciate you. If any of y'all would like to become a team, Keep It Clean patron, you go to patreon.com slash Vids, and let's get into it. So John Harbaugh at the owners meeting, speaking to the media about the Baltimore Ravens, he first talked about uh, how he appreciates the efforts to get the kickoff return back in the game. And I've been real surprised on how that's been going because I told my guy, told my guy like a long time ago, my guy Ghetto Vegan, I told him a long time ago, Tariq, uh, that I expected the kickoff to be eliminated from the NFL uh, within like two to three years. And I told him that back maybe like five years ago, five, six years ago, something like that. And it's still here. It's holding on by a thread, but it's still here. But they changing some stuff up with that. Anyway, uh, he also talked about um, that he's all for taking the hip drop tackle out of the game. That's been a big uh, conversation recently, especially how Mark Andrews ended up getting eliminated from playing for a couple of months. Uh, he did come back, but he was out for a little while because of the hip drop tackle. And that's a tricky one, man. That's a tricky one. I know uh, defenders, they talked about it. Richard Sherman and Sean Merriman, I, I know they had a conversation about it um, where it's – the defenses already have a big uh, unfair advantage. Well, offenses have a big unfair advantage compared to defenses because, uh, again, the NFL, they want points, they want scores and all that stuff. They want to make it extremely hard for defenses and defenders. Um, but I think Richard Sherman talked about how, when you have to tackle somebody that's bigger than you, uh, what do you do? You can't go head up with them. You almost got to do that hip drop tackle. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, Harbaugh also talked about Patrick Queen, said that Patrick Queen is one of his all-time favorite people and that he's excited uh, at, about the opportunity that Trent Simpson is going to have in replacing Patrick Queen. So that kind of gives us a little bit of insight right there that it could be Roquan and Trent Simpson. So we got to come up with a nickname for Trent Simpson. We, we're going to call him T30. We're going to call him Simpson. We're going to call him Trent. We'll, we'll figure it out later. Uh, he said he fully expects that Simpson will play very well uh, and also said he was happy to get Chris Boyd back. You know, big special teams guy, Chris Boyd, big captain of special teams guy. So he, I'm sure he will be very good in his role again since he's a role that he's already familiar with. So that helps. Um, he also talked about the young tight ends evolving is going to be a big part of what we're doing now. We would all hope so because with – Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, we all know, we've all talked about it a lot of times, that it is crazy how if one of them's out, then, hey, whichever one is on the field, they're going to go off, and vice versa. But if they both on the field, which we like, oh, yeah, both healthy, both on the field, let's go. nothing ever happens. They both they, they, they can't both produce for some reason. It, it's like the strangest thing. And one thing that a lot of people have been thinking about and wondering if the Baltimore Ravens should do, and my guy Seven, the newest team keeper clean patron, asked this question. He said, hey, Raven, I've been following uh, since you and Nitro did a joint video. Appreciate that. He said, top three content creator, and I can't wait to see where team keeper clean goes. Uh, I would probably be considered a bottom three content creator, but I appreciate you. He said, a uh, question, do you think likely could solve our big body X receiver role? Lamar and him already have great chemistry, and he comes down with everything. Well, yeah, like likely is really good, man. And I always said that if he started, obviously it can't happen because they got Mark Andrews, but if he were to start a full 17 games, he would be a top five tight end, no doubt in my mind at all. None. 
Uh, and I don't even think there's any doubt in y'all minds either that he'll be a top five tight end if he were to start every single game for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, um, as far as him being that big body receiver, X, I mean, they, they could put him out there sometimes, but he, he's a tight end. So he does stuff different. I know he used to play wide receiver, but he does stuff different than a wide receiver. He's used differently than a wide receiver is. You, again, you can have him out there, but I, I wouldn't want them to be like, all right, since we got Isaiah Likely, you know what? That'll solve all our problems. Still use him now. Use him and have plays and stuff where he is uh he's out at wide receiver and whatnot. But I wouldn't want them to go about it like that and be like, you know what? We're going to neglect the wide receiver position. I mean, right now they ain't gotta go crazy with it, but there there is like one significant spot. That's available right now yeah, But we're going to talk about wide receiver In a little bit Because John Harbaugh He said something when it was like, uh, Anyway let's keep going um, Harbaugh also said I, I, Oh here we go He said I think we're going to be In great shape at wide receiver Give those young guys a chance And see how they do a lot of people took this as uh, Oh oh no yo, no, We're set at wide receiver Yeah Harbaugh I agree Yeah Harbaugh speaking the truth No he's not That's Give, the, give those young guys a chance and see how they do. The Baltimore Ravens are not going to do this. They're not. They are definitely. When, when, when I saw that, I thought, oh, yeah, they, they definitely getting wide receiver. A, a veteran wide receiver at that. They recently brought in um, Michael Gallup. They recently brought in Josh Reynolds. They getting a wide receiver. Who it is, it might not even be one of them. It probably won't even be one of them two. But it's going to be somebody. I, I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. So, who is going to be? We'll see. But when I saw that, um, yeah, okay, Harbaugh. Yeah, uh, I believe you. Anyway, uh, continuing, he said uh, he'd be happy to bring either J.K. Dobbins or Dalvin Cook back. He, he said, hey, y'all y'all train together. That's enough. Y'all ain't going to be playing together. And, and, and come playoff time, y'all ain't going to be playing at all. But anyway, uh, he said, uh, but if it can't happen, he's confident giving young guys an opportunity. Um... I don't think either one of them is going to be back. I would love for both of them to be back, um, especially with the injury to Keith Mitchell. Um, and just to have, like, that would be three uh, running back ones on a team. Think about that. That would be three running back ones on a team. Three guys who have started plenty of games throughout their careers. Now, Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook, they've been the healthier ones, but if J.K. Dobbins could be on a team – and I know he's dealt with his injuries, but having him there too, like, oh my goodness, like you you set at running back, man. Because if he so happens to get hurt or something, you still got Derrick Henry, you still got Dalvin Cook, and then eventually you're gonna have Keaton Mitchell. So like, I, I wouldn't mind it at all, cause that that would be such a nice lineup, man. Like think of, like three number one running backs. You got to deal with Derrick Henry. Oh man, we so tired of tackling this dude, Derrick Henry. He's so annoying. Then Dalvin Cook comes off the bench. Oh, now we got to deal with Dalvin Cook, man. Move out the way. Leave. Then you got to deal with J.K. Dobbins, a healthy J.K. Dobbins. Oh, man. That, that would be great. And then again, and then imagine if Keaton Mitchell is there. Oh, my goodness. Woo. But I, I just, and that's just me. I don't think either one of them is going to be back. I would love for it to happen, but I just don't think it will. Speaking about somebody being back. Harbaugh said there's optimism that both Jadavian Clowney and Kyle Vannoy will be back. Uh, he said he's periodically texts with both players, but he's not sure about their timetable to sign. So um, that would be nice. That would be nice. And I did see some comments on Twitter today to say, hey, hopefully they are back because I don't trust the other two. And the other two that somebody was referring to uh, was Adafi Away and David Ajabo. We're going to speak about Ajabo in a couple of seconds, but... Jadavion Clown and Calvin Noy, last year, they were nice. They were nice. And, and with Harbaugh saying that, where the part where he talked about um, he's periodically texts with both players, but he's not sure about their timetable to sign. Harbaugh letting you know. He, 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 he's speaking in code, but that code has been broken a long time ago. He's letting you know that the, they probably don't want to sign before training camp. They, they, they probably don't want to be participating in no training camp. They want to take that time off. They are both veteran players that have been there, done that, and especially with Jadavian Clowney, we know that dude is not a fan of training camp at all. 
I would be surprised. Now, two things I'll be surprised about. I just said two things and I held up one finger. Shame on me. But two things I'll be surprised about with Jadavion and Clowney, especially. One, if he signs before training camp, and two, if he even signs with the Baltimore Ravens, because I just I don't see it happening. Like we talked about the other day, and we continue to speak about the money. The money. Then John Harbaugh talked about how the Ravens are tight against the cap, but it's the 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 money. Uh I just he can get more money from the Jets or the Panthers. They can pay him more. So I think that it's just it's, it's going to be about the money. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's, a, it's a chance. It ain't over till it's over. Until he officially signs with another team, then that's when it'll be over. But EDC and them, they still got a, they still got a little chance. So we'll see. Now, moving to the conversation that most Ravens fans have been having, all of us, maybe most all Ravens fans have been having, what is going to happen with the offensive line? And ooh, Harbaugh did his best in Pinocchio impersonation. We're going to talk about it in a little bit. But first, he said that Andrew Voorhees will be a, f- a full full participant and he'll be fully good when the offseason program starts. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Uh, Andrew Voorhees was expected to be, what, like a, a maybe a first, but a second or third round pick. Definitely top three rounds. Um, day one or day two pick. Uh, and now you'll ha- have him available. Last year, of course, he did a little red shirt thing. He was just hurt the whole year. Now, I did read, I think it was from um, Ken McHugh, the film study Ravens. I think he said that uh, last year doesn't count towards Andrew Voorhees, his uh, four year uh, contract. So it starts this year, I believe. So that would be a really good thing for the Baltimore Ravens. So, but yeah, having him in the mix and the possibility of him co- competing for a spot on the offensive line is nice, but I still stick by what I said, and I'm always stick by that. You cannot, a, a player coming off of a big injury, especially when they miss the entire first year of their career in the NFL, you cannot put all your eggs into that basket. Even they, if they were expected to be drafted high, that's great, but the what happened is that they were hurt. They were hurt. They missed the whole year. You cannot be like, all right, that guy's going to be our starter. He could be in the mix. He could have a competition or whatnot, but you got to bring in other competition too, and I'm sure that they will. Hub also said that he expects Josh Johnson to be the backup quarterback, but he's excited to see how Malik Cunningham looks. That's one I could see. I, I, I could see that one happening um, because even with Malik Cunningham last year, like they Malik Cunningham, they continue to say that he is a project without saying that he was a project because Harbaugh said that. I remember last year during the year, he was like, oh, yeah, we'll try him out at backup quarterback. Oh, we'll also give him some looks at returner and receiver. When they start saying all that, then, yeah, they just you, you're a project to them. Um, so we'll see what happens with Malik Cunningham. I, I would like to see them. Really uh, get the most quarterback that they can out of him. Give him that shot. Because, hey, you, you never know, man. You never know. Now, obviously, he wouldn't be no starter. But even as a backup, you never know. Um, he also talked about how David Ajabo is healthy. And he expects him to break out this year. That's the only thing. I think that's, that's the only concern with David Ajabo, man. It's health. But that is a really big concern. But... That's the that's the only concern. Rookie year, towards Achilles at Pro Day. Ravens drafted him second round. All right, cool. Played a couple games toward the end of the season. Got a sack. Like when he plays, he be making an impact. He makes an impact when he plays. But then his his, his sophomore year, uh, he was playing in the preseason and stuff. And people were like, man, he's getting pushed around a lot. And he was, but then played in regular season, looked solid, and then boom, out for the rest of the year. And that was it. It's quick. So we haven't gotten to see him for a full year. When he plays again, he makes a positive impact in the regular season, but he doesn't play in the regular season. Haven't seen him in the regular season. So again, Harbaugh can say that, and that's great. We hope, we all hope that he has a breakout year. But stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. You Right now you can't trust him. You, you cannot put all your trust in David Ajabo. You want him to go all. It's the same, it was the same thing with J.K. Dobbins. Players that can play. Oh, both second round picks too, by the way. But players that you know can play. Players that you know can ball. Players that got all the potential in the world, but health keeps getting in the way. When health keeps getting in the way, you got to take other avenues too, man. You, you got to take other routes. You got to make that GPS take a little alternate way uh, because the way that that player has been going, it just hasn't been working. So, 
have other options ready, please, Jonathan Hubble, please. And I know you will. I know EDC, and I know they will. Hey, if you turn that Texan, uh, Jadavian Clowney and Calvinoy, turn that periodic Texan into daily Texan, please. Shout out to the Daily Text, by the way. Anyway, he said, Harbaugh said that Lamar has told the organization about a few of the wide receivers that he likes coming out in the draft. Oh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I saw this comment on Twitter, too. Oh, my guy, Gamer Guy 9, he was like, oh, yeah, so basically, whichever receivers are from Florida. And that's what it is. But think about this if it's a receiver from Florida, Lamar Jackson is guaranteed. To have an excellent connection with guaranteed. Because think about it. Hollywood Brown, where is he from? He's from Hollywood, Florida. He's from Florida. And Lamar Jackson, they he liked Hollywood and they boys and whatnot. Their connection was A1. Zay Flowers, where is he from? He's from Broward County, Florida. Him and Lamar's connection is a one. So if Lamar is telling them about some receivers that he likes, and they from Florida, like they like they already good with me. If they from Florida, oh yeah, you straight. But the connection is gonna be there, like it's gonna be there. So and then you know they gonna have an off season together because they all gonna be down here in South Florida training. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, Harbor O, it come Pinocchio. <laughs> oh, Harbor said that Daniel Filele will get a chance to win the right tackle job. Hey, and you know what, man? You know, I, I take it back. Harbor wasn't being Pinocchio with this one. He wasn't telling a lie. Because, well, he said Daniel Filele will get a chance to win the right tackle job. Um, Like my guy uh, Skeptical pointed out, Harbor didn't say it would be a big chance. He said it would be a chance. Uh, but no, with, with, with Falele, um, it's all about opportunity. Falele is somebody else who was a, a project for the Baltimore Ravens. Somebody, uh, I think they just hoping uh, they can turn into something. Uh, all that size that he got, uh, they just got to find a way uh, to really have him use that, uh, incorporate some agility as much as he possibly can, but just really try to get the most out of him uh, as a fourth round pick from a couple of years ago. And it's somebody that's he's been getting more and more experience as time has gone on, like especially last year with being on the rotation with Morgan Moses. Um, that has been uh, that's going to be something to see. I, I don't think he's going to win the job, uh, but having him as a backup is not a bad option. And hey, who knows? Who knows? This. He could shut me up, and he could have an amazing training camp and all that, amazing off season, and then we have Daniel Filele, all seven foot eight of them, being the Baltimore Ravens' right tackle. You never know, but I, I just don't think it'll be him. It's a possibility, but I, I just I think it's still gonna be a veteran. Um, I, I still think it's gonna be a veteran. Uh, because we still, well, we got left guard, right guard, and right tackle. So uh, it's going to be a mix of veterans, and I, I think two veterans and one rookie. That's how I think it'll shake out. Now, I know people still freaking out about the offensive line, which I get it, but the time is ticking. And another thing, like free agency, obviously, we've been in free agency for, what, a week and – uh, well, it hasn't been, oh, about yeah, about a week and a half. It started on March 11th or March 13th, something like that. I forgot what day it started. But it's been a little over a week and a half. Um, draft coming up a month from now. Uh, but remember, after the draft, a lot of guys get cut. A whole lot of guys get cut after the draft. You know, Ravens, they be looking for that. Like It's, it's like um, when people go shopping. People go shopping, and they've been spending, they be sending all this money, buying all this stuff. Uh, but Ravens are the people that wait they said oh man these stores they they out of stock on everything you know what let's wait till all these people they they start returning their stuff and then oh yeah we're gonna find a bunch of deals and that's what happens every year so that's why that's why i'm i'm, I'm not tripping about really any anything going on right now it's so early again the the, the season st starts a little in a little less than six months so they got plenty of time. Something else that Harbaugh said, he said that saner heads have prevailed and Patrick Ricard will be staying at fullback, not moving to offensive line. <laughs> I mean, we know Patrick Ricard could do everything, but who, whose idea was that? I, now, they did say, I remember when they talked about that last year, 
they had Patrick Ricard working with the offensive line last year in the offseason. I do remember that, but I guess they they scrapping that now. They're like, hey, he's going to stay at fullback. Um, and I, I'm still surprised that they didn't cut him and re-sign him yet or redo his deal. I'm surprised. I, I really thought that they would have done that by now. Um, they could be uh, they, they could be waiting. Um, I mean, the fullback market don't go crazy, but they could be waiting till teams are more established at the fullback position just a bit because uh, they may not want to risk doing a um, – a Ben Mason They might not want to risk Pat Ricard doing a Ben Mason Where they cut him And then they agree to him They have a verbal agreement Oh you gonna be back Oh yeah I'll be back buddy I'll be right back buddy I can't wait to come back And then when it comes to him coming back He end up going to New England or something So we'll see uh, He also said uh, Harbaugh said We're in a tight cap situation And he attributed the Morgan Moses trade To just being too tight against the cap And needing some flexibility So Shout out to John Harbaugh for that one. He had he had a lot of interesting stuff to say. Uh, shout out to Jeff Zrebic, um, because we were able to just look at his cliff notes. Um, so shout out to Jeff Zrebic. Jeff Zrebic is the best in the business at covering the Baltimore Ravens. We love Jeff Zrebic. Love Jeff Zrebic a lot because he he be coming through major. Um, and one thing that I, I really appreciate about Jeff Zrebic is that he don't just say anything. Uh, when it comes to his reporting, he don't just put anything out there. Uh, if he puts it out there, he is a thousand percent certain on it. Uh, that's why we, we we love everything that Jeff Zrebic does. Now, uh, it didn't stop there uh, because this is from Jameson Hensley. Now, uh, he talked about um, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jameson Hensley talked about some different things in a little bit more more detail uh, because he talked about it. He said John Harbaugh said the reason why Odell Beckham Jr. is not returning to the Baltimore Ravens is a financial one. It's all about the money. Um, and he said, uh, Harbaugh pointed out that Baltimore is tight against the cap. So with Odell Beckham Jr., yeah, he said it's about the money. Huh? Yeah, okay. Um, you, know, you know, they could have worked out something, but it's okay. Odell Beckham Jr., you're going to have a good time down in Miami once that becomes official. And I think it'll become official. That's going to be fun to watch. Like Tyreek Hill, Odell Beckham Jr. Because Odell, Be Odell can still play, but can he stay healthy? Can he be out there a lot more than he was with the Ravens? Because the Ravens, he was out there here and there, but he didn't get a high percentage of snaps like that. Can he get that in Miami? We'll see. Uh, also, back to the um, John Harbaugh talking about Josh Johnson. He said uh, he can play at a really high level. Uh, and he said that Johnson and Jackson, Josh Johnson and Lamar Jackson have a great relationship. Now, that's important. With the first, with the start and the backup quarterback, it is important that they have a, a really good uh, relationship um, because it it makes a big difference. Like you don't want just two quarterbacks, your starter and your backup to be beefing. Like and I'm sure every, every backup quarterback they want to be a starter. Like who? Everybody will want to be a starter. Like you playing in, you don't play in the NFL to just be a backup. You want to start in the league. You want opportunities. Um, but I think with Josh Johnson, especially at this point in his career, like he knows that anywhere he goes. He'll be a filler. He'll be a transition. He'll be not even a transition player. He'll, he'll be a, just a backup. He'll just be a backup. Somebody who's there to support uh, the starters. And I think it's a role that he's definitely accepted. That's why he keep coming back to the Ravens. Because he know you're not going to start for the Ravens. But he know that he's going to offer his services as a backup, as another camp on. Um, and just as somebody that can help the team continue to do what they've been doing team keep it clean i appreciate everything that y'all have been doing and that y'all continue to do uh, again make sure you subscribe to the channel turn notifications on and just like y'all have been doing for every video recently keep running them likes up i love y'all shout out to john harbaugh who <laughs> he talked about a lot a whole lot uh, and we'll see how everything ends up shaking out uh, with these Baltimore Ravens, especially at the wide receiver position, especially at the offensive line, especially with Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Vanoy, especially with J.K. Dobbins and Dalvin Cook, especially with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Like, he talked about a little bit of everything. But that's why we like hearing from Harbaugh. We like seeing what he says about everything because you all know we're going to talk about everything like we do all day, every day.